And pick up the phone, call now. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show. On the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Great friends, what's going on? It's Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. And we are coming to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. Today is going to be a very interesting day on the show, and here's why. Because I feel like we've talked many times about watching games together and podcasting us watching the games. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, I'm trying to remember who was playing. It was a Charger game. I want to say it was a Monday night football game. It was me, Alex, Browner, Billy Ray, Linda, and Heath Bell all in my house watching a Charger game. And we broadcast it or too. streamed it. Oh, Bert Grossman was there too? Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. I forgot about Bert. Oh, Bert's going to hear this on the radio today and be pissed. Oh, I'm going to be getting tweets about this. What else is new? I know. Well, anyway, we were all there in my house and we were all watching this game and we were broadcasting it, streaming it on YouTube. And as I recall, Alex, like that was a very, like that was a highly engaging YouTube video, right? Like people do watch other people watching games on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Crap. I know. Crap I'm trying today. not to talk. Just keep going. <laughs> so here's the thing. Today, Blowing my nose over here. Really? It's got worse? I can barely uh, talk. I wait, don't think wait a second. Wait, oh, hold. Time out. Alex has boogers. We talked about this yesterday. His trip down to Texas. It was freezing rain. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All these changes of temperatures, Oxnard dry and Santa Ana winds. Blah blah blah. Yesterday you told us all about your booger situation. You're not better today. You're actually worse. I was doing really good this morning, and then like we hit we hit record, and all of a sudden I could feel it from my nose to my throat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. But but tough guy that you are, you don't miss work. I mean. Mm. Tomorrow we might be missing work. Mm. Come on. You're going to get worse between today and tomorrow. You're not going to get better. I'm not getting better, man. It's been a week. <sighs> man. And over to Brown man here. What, what, what? You never get sick. What's your deal? Bro, I don't know, man. I can barely talk. Like, like really, like really poorly. It's not great. It's not oh, great at gonna all. going to be awesome. I'm not going to have to listen to any of your crap today. Yeah. You know how it takes today? Yeah. I'm going to just, I'm going to ramble today. Just, just, as long as you don't talk about Justin Fields. I mean, I got I got one rant in me. You got one rant in me. <laughs> you got one good rant got, in you? I got one in me, one. one. All right. All right. All right. Well, then everybody hang on for a second. Today's going to be a great show and an interesting show in this way. So as most of you probably know who are listening on radio right now on 1090, we broadcast on 1090 the podcast. We take the, the podcast, which streams on YouTube, and I'm going to call a quick time out here. Yes, our YouTube channel is suspended. We violated a rule that we didn't realize. They took us down for a week. We'll be back on our main YouTube channel later in the week. In the short term, we're using our clips page, which is like a secondary page, to actually stream the show on YouTube. Little workaround, if you will. Now, many of you, in fact, about half of you who watch daily on YouTube, you guys have figured this out. The other half of you are like me. You're like, I don't know how to do it. It's too much technology. I'm old. Yeah, um, it's not that hard. Even I could probably come up with it for reals. So um, today, while we're podcasting, the U.S. versus Iran soccer game, we'll catch at least the first half of the game while we're podcasting. So if you're driving around on radio right now and you're like, dude, that game happened earlier, but I didn't get to see any of it, we're all going to be essentially watching the first half together. Now we all or two thirds of the show. I'm, I'm very glad you asked that question, Alex Browner, even though you don't feel so good today, even though yesterday you had a, an apple while on the air and an orange, which is very unusual for you to eat something. That's not from Wendy's or Popeye's right. McDonald's. Right. Will you watch the game? Do you have the energy today to watch U.S. versus Iran? You know, that's the reason I won't watch in low energy. Low energy. Energy got me. I got, I got, I don't have it in me to cheer for the U.S. soccer team today. Oh, damn. Then this uh, game, though, 
really take on like a Rocky Four vibe for everybody in this kind of like a, like no. a Cold War no. kind of mood between no. those countries facing yes. off no. in sport. Oh yes. my god! Yes, Browner, if you say no, let me tell you something. So I Iran mean, is Ivan Drago. Oh, I don't know no. if, if if they're Drago. It's yeah, Rocky just more about the best a... Rocky. So if we're it gonna do that, Rocky. but the vibe around Va- Rocky was way more political than I think anybody ever really talks about. Like the whole Russia, America, doping versus non-doping, even though Sylvester Stallone was doped out of his mind in that in that movie. Mm-hmm. But like, this, 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 I think even this one is not even as subtle as Rocky Four. This is straight up a political battle happening on the field in Qatar. Hey, Browner, but, it, I wanna, but I want to tell you something, mm-hmm. dog. I want you to today, if you can, even while we're on the air, Go go to the LA Times sports section today and read their cover story about Iran, the current regime, this soccer well, team, the pressure that these players are living in, the opposition protests that are going on inside of Iran, and by the way, how the Iranian um, journalists who are in Qatar to cover the World Cup when they interview or you know during media sessions when they talk to the u.s players they are um pushing negativity from inside the united states you know like they'll make all these statements about race relations to the players and the u.s players are on the receiving end of these long you know winded questions uh and harangues essentially that the iranian journalists are putting on the u.s players because to them to iran We've been the bad guys for all these years. Well, and so from if, our, if, go ahead. Sorry. Well, and from our perspective, at least for those of us that remember, like when I was a kid, the Iranian hostage situation, you know, we look at them practically my whole life as the bad guys in the Middle East, Iran, Iraq, we already Afghanistan. And so what's happening inside their country right now, as it's being reported and what this soccer team means to the country and what this game against the U S means to them politically and all the uprisings and things that are going on inside that country. It is a, um, it is a much bigger deal on both sides, in my opinion, than just some random soccer game. Read that article dog. I know, I know more about the political side of this than you could even understand. So I get it. The political oh, portion of it. I couldn't understand it. I, could, I couldn't could understand it. it. Like, like just, there's nothing that you could do to explain it to me. Because this, this is what I will share with you. I don't mm-hmm. need the LA Times to tell me what's going on. Like they tried to tell. No, I'm just telling you it's a good article. That's uh, all. They also tried to tell the LA fans, this is how you can have a, be upset with the Padres. How'd that work out? So oh, I'm not, on. I'm not, I'm not getting involved with them Come in on. anything. Come on. Come on. Really? Yeah. I said it. I said, I, mm-hmm. listen, we don't forget. All right. Well, it's the now you hear about forget. the latest about with the Iranian players supposedly were threatened by the country if uh, they were they threatened their families um, that if they don't behave, um, they could be their families could be tortured and imprisoned. And by behave, what exactly did that mean? Because the Iranian players. Oh, you know what that means. Before the first two games, <clears throat> they had some form of like protest, like one of the games. They all like put their hands on each other's shoulders and that was supposed to be right. Then the next game, they didn't sing the national anthem or, or, or maybe they touched each other. Like that was supposed to be like, Hey, we're in, we're, we're with you people that are out there protesting and we're not singing the national anthem. And then the next game they did, but they did something. If they did, if they do not sing the national anthem or if they take part in any political protest against the Tehran regime, they, their families would face quote violence and, and torture. Can you imagine that in our country? It depends on which family member. Yeah. Because this, yeah. I'll tell you right now. I'll Brown, not, you would I, sacrifice I, a few, wouldn't you? I, listen, I, I would not sing. The, if, that, if I could pick the family members, I wouldn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't sing. I wear a rainbow armband if I could pick the family member. Hey, look, I got 10 people. Right. right. Okay. Take, how them many down. You, take them down. How many do you take? We take 30%. All right. So, yeah, so I when get you to in... decide which three go. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So in that right, same right. breath that you're talking about the journalist asking the U.S. player, uh, I think Adams specifically, mm-hmm. about you know the 
Black Lives Matter movement and the racism in America, you don't think those journalists are also being threatened? Like, hey, you of better course. go ask these questions. Well, that's that's and also it's doing. kind of it's kind of fair in, in a in a in a World Cup 100% setting. Is fair. It's one hundred. It's so fair because American journalists are always mm-hmm. asking other other players from other countries about the atrocities happening in their countries. Mm-hmm. And if, I got, if I'm with you, and dude, and if no other problem. countries think our our stuff is atro- atrocious, then ask them. Right. Right. It's fine. It's fine. But and he answered it beautifully. Him. What What did he say? He just said, "Dude, I grew up. I'm a black. I'm a black guy that grew up in a white family. I've learned to deal with uh, adversity and adjusting to cultures my entire life. I play in Europe. I don't play in America. Like he answered it really well. Nice, good. Look, I have no problem with the Iranian press. We know what they're trying to do. Hey, we're trying to make you, Mister American guy." Look like a jerk because your country sucks. Also, you okay? would be corrected if you were in the press conference because you still call it Iran, even though the people have been telling you it's Iran forever. I've been and Iran. that journalist is was just like he, he was very snarky with Adams. He's like, first of all, it's Iran. Can we finally oh. get that straight? Oh, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about me, dog. No, he told uh he told Adams that too. You know, it's amazing, though. I, I have a friend of mine, really good buddy of mine. I rode bikes with this guy for years, trained with him forever, and consider him a brother. And he's Iranian. And his whole family, um, his parents left in the revolution, I want to say in like the 70s sometime. And they were like educated and um, I, I guess I would call them rich I- at the time. And they got out of there. Because, you know, the revolution was happening. I, I, they know, you know, this whole story. I'm, I'm only kind of giving you what I know of it. They left the country. They came to America. They came to San Diego. I guess they had relatives here or something. And um, they started from ground zero. They had nothing because the money that they made there, they couldn't take. And the education that they got there didn't translate over to here. So, like, they were doctors, let's say, in Iran. And they were, like, janitors over here in America. And so they started from nothing. And they made an amazing life and um, lived a long, healthy life. Thank goodness. My dad died a couple of years ago. He's in his 90s. Um, and they've made a lot of money. And they're actually incredible business people. Um, whatever. They are Americans. Iranian Americans. And gosh, man, these people love their country and, and wish that the people who live there now got to live the way they live in America. And that's that's. I don't really know a whole lot of what's going on. And Browner obviously knows everything. And I would never be able to understand it, even if he explained it. <laughs> even if I tried, dog. I, I know, dog. Times I they know. got nothing on Browner. Zero, I know, zero. I know. Well, I mean, they they came up with the how to build hatred for the Padres, you know, uh, column. So Browner has also wrote, respect. They also wrote, if there was ever a case to get rid of the playoffs, the Dodgers are are the reason this year. So, yeah. Incredible uh, journalism mm. coming out of that, that building. <laughs> Top-notch journalism <laughs> coming out of there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, what is journalism today, right? A great, cool, even better question. I mean, are, are newspapers still considered? Yeah, right. Are newspapers still considered journalism, or are newspapers just blogs YouTube, on paper? TikTok and and you know, I knew journalism yeah. was changing when I went my junior college journalism. I was mm-hmm. that was my major. They got rid of it after my first year. I got to San Diego. <laughs> I got to San Diego State, and yeah. they're like, hey. We have it, but really, it's more of like a communications, media studies kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, sweet. Cool. All right. Right on. Let me learn well, here's YouTube. I, yeah, here, here's, what, here's what's going to be fun about today's show. We've always talked about watching games and being on YouTube. Today, we're going to have a chance to be on YouTube, be on audio podcast. For the first half, be on radio on 1090. And maybe we'll even put a little bit of this on TV. We'll have to see what happens. How about, I Fox have an Sports idea. Okay, go ahead. So we, we're going to talk to Eric here next segment. Right. <clears throat> and then after that, we don't have any yeah. guests. And really, I don't think there's like a big pressing story that needs to be like dissected. You know, ooh, the Chargers aren't getting Sean Payton. Ooh, Jeff Saturday, timeouts, no timeouts. You know, I don't really think there's like ooh, this. Like LeBron James and the uh, Lakers blow a 17-point right, lead. Right. Aztecs versus court. Irvine. Aztecs drop to number 24 in the poll. Whatever. You know, there isn't really like this like massive major story. Yeah. You just throw the game on and talk about it. In. So we're done. In. Browner? Brown, hey, this is, listen, a, listen. This is a YouTube experiment today. Listen, listen. We got to build more subscribers on our clips ch- page now that we're suspended. Thanks to somebody. I don't want to say who. <laughs> Look, man, right. majority rules in around here, man. So I'm out. Y'all go, go ahead. I'll watch and I'll comment as we go along. 
Yeah, dude, give us your soccer commentary. Yeah. Soccer commentary from a guy who's begrudgingly watching the game. Right. Can I boo? You can. All right. You can. You can do whatever you like. What time does it start? Leon. <laughs> Leon. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, All right. Hey, um, as we get started today, yes, Alex, excuse me. No, I keep was about doing to... your thing. Keep doing okay. your thing. Because right. I want to show get you today. Here shortly. Okay, great. Um, you know, man, um, I want everybody to know that um, during this holiday season, everybody's trying to sell you something, including us. And by the way, no shame. I saw Stephen A. Smith on first take about a week ago promoting his new book. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. This is my new book. All the stuff I want to talk about that I can't hear on ESPN on first take, all it's all in here. Buy my book. Great. Awesome. You'll notice today, for those of you watching, I'm wearing my Chargers Hater Club t-shirt. I love this shirt. Isn't it great to love a hater shirt? It's fun. And I know today what will happen is this will make it out onto Twitter and Instagram and YouTube, and I'll just get banked around by, like, the two Charger trolls that there are out there. So, but. Guys, here, you know what you guys should do? You guys should buy one of these. And here's how you do it. You go to kaplanandcrew.com, go to our merch shop, and we've got all the gear. The Hey King t-shirts, the Slay Queen t-shirts. I know I saw uh, somebody the other day sent me the, uh, the copy of the receipt that they bought the Great Friends bucket hat. Thank you for that. The Charger Hater Club gear. Um, all the stuff that happened in this magical baseball season. Pay that man. Uh, the Musgrove stuff. We love Joe Musgrove around here. Shout out. So go to the merch shop. And uh, right now, 15%. You're saving. And free shipping. And free shipping. Clutch. And this is all through a third party. Like, we have a deal. Like, you guys order. They print. They ship. They give us, like, I don't know, $3 to $5 per, per item. So we're not making a lot of money. But I'll tell you right now, um, it helps around Christmas bonus time. Tell you that right now. You two guys, of all people, should want to be pushing this stuff. It's a charity for me, the John Brennan Legal Defense Fund. Yeah, I know. I'm wearing a great fresh shirt under this hoodie. It's just too cold to take this hoodie off. But yeah, it's freezing. I know. And I'm I wearing, ordered I'm... some stuff for our boat party. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The boat party with next level sailing. Shout out to Captain Troy. Shout out to Captain Fathom. The boat party is December 17th. Me. Browner and Grande are meeting Minana. Putting it all together. Yeah, we got to do it quick because uh, the 17th is 17 days away. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to do it. But I've already talked to Captain Fathom and Captain Troy, so the date cool. is reserved. The time is reserved. That'd be funny if it's yeah. just the three of us because we didn't. We forgot the planet. That'd be yeah. hilarious. The, the good news for me is this. Um, I was supposed to have another thing right after that, the 17th. I was going to go from 3.30 to 5.30, and then I was going to be someplace else by like 7 o'clock that night. That person canceled their party, so there could be an after party. Oh. There could be an after party. At your house? I was thinking more like volunteering Linda's house, but that's just me. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. it's kind of like, well, maybe we'll do another form of your wedding at Linda's house. She'll say yes to that. I know she will. She's already yeah. kind of put it out there. Yeah. All right, uh, all right. Look at this. Yes. Let me hear. What do we got? We could do this. Oh, nice scoreboard. USA versus Iran. Yes. We could do this. And then look, we can we can we can go all day, boys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hopefully we get that score for nothing, USA. For those of you listening on radio, here's what we're trying to explain to you. We are podcasting, then we are broadcasting on radio. And even though today you may hear us talking about the first half of the US versus Iran soccer game, what are you doing today? Are you sitting around watching this thing? Are you going to a bar for lunch and watching all this? I mean, if you are, great. You'll relive it. If not, you'll be like, oh, this was exciting and fun. Right, Browner? So jazzed. Oh, my God. You're such a hater. So why did you, uh, why did you add your phone here? If, is it still connected? Oh, sorry. Um, I planned on uh, <laughs> showing you guys some video. Um, uh -huh. My dog, dude. I, I, honestly, my dog and I, we have become such BFFs. Like, we were always tight, you know? But... This past week, when my kids were all away for Thanksgiving with their mom in Boston, me and the dog, we just, we took our relationship to the next level, dude. And we hang out together. And he usually just lays right by my side the whole show. He happened to get up probably to go outside for a little bit and bark at something. But people yesterday were like hitting me up going, dude, I love to hear about you and your dog. I never really thought of it. Because, you know, like when Scott Van Pelt, did you guys ever see the story of ESPN, Scott Van Pelt, his dog died? 
I wasn't beefing with Scott at this point. No, I was just following the story. His dog died. Did you know that? No, I didn't. And he told this, like, he cried on Sports Center about his dog. People, I mean, listen, I'm not suggesting to you that it's not emotional, but it was like a big part of his life. And like, he always had pictures of him. I never really thought of my dog and I as that close. But all of a sudden, dude, we have taken our relationship to the next level, bro. And we sleep together every night. We touch each other. Like we're back to back. Last night our butts were touching each other. Yeah, like, yeah, what's oh, gross is that man. you admitted how you sleep at night. So yeah, I sleep naked. Mm. Yeah, weird. Dogs you naked, say, I'm naked. When you say touch each other. You yeah, sleep. like our butts were touch. We were sleeping butt to butt. Does that sound like I I don't know. Does that really sound weird to people? Or dog owners are like, I get it. I'm a dog no, owner no. and I don't get it. Oh really? Yeah. But that yeah. do you boo? Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, um, stick around. We're just getting started. Eric Williams from Fox Sports is going to be here to talk NFL. And we got, a, we got a really great show. Along with Grande and the Brown Man, we're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. Let's do it. Kaplan and Crew tonight is brought to you by Jackery Solar Generator. Explore further with Jackery Solar Generator. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew. Every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk and the Mightier 1090.com. Absolutely. The best part of the day is working with the team and working directly with customers. Just because it's fun and I enjoy collaborating. I enjoy watching the customers' reactions when the designers come up with their spaces. And we, we really take pride in the team effort and what we accomplish in the end. I can tell that uh, the team we have, uh, accountability is very important. They feel like the work that we do is, is not just a reflection of themselves, but a reflection of us. We've always been a design build company, but now we've taken design, not only our architectural, but interior design to a completely different level. The philosophy of integrity here at Murray Lampert is always doing the right thing even when someone isn't looking. In turn, the homeowners get a really great product. We're truly a team at Murray Lampert Design Build Remodel and we don't take that lightly. next outdoor family adventure awaits. Exploring and adventuring to new places, creating beautiful memories for your ultimate family experience using clean and pure energy. Endless charging for endless possibility. Fueling all your outdoor needs. Our easy to set up solar panels offer clean and powerful energy. Pass-through charging means you can charge still fully enjoying your adventures. Experience your dreams with Jackery. Be free on your travels, enjoying delicious meals. Listen to the sounds of nature or a great film, peacefully and quietly. Making these small moments count. Jackery Solar Generator. Jackery. Kaplan Accrued tonight is brought to you by Jackery Solar Generator. Explore further with Jackery Solar Generator.
Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Hey, everybody. I'm glad you guys are watching. And right in the middle of the show, I love to talk about one of our great sponsors. In this case, it's Jackery. And you can visit them online at jackery.com. And a couple of Jackery ambassadors, brand ambassadors are standing by. This is Giselle and Steven, who I've been looking at their website, The Lover's Passport. Hey, guys, first of all, welcome. Glad to have you guys here. How are you doing today? Amazing. Doing great. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. Tell us what The Lover's Passport is. I've been looking at the website, theloverspassport.com, and I am so jealous of the two of you guys. <laughs> Well, it kind of started as just a side hustle for us, a little couple's adventure blog, um, if you will. And it slowly turned into a passion project of ours during COVID lockdown. And we bought our first camera in April of 2020 and just started capturing all of our adventures instead of just writing about them. And fast forward to present day, now we're both full-time travel photographers and, and adventure enthusiasts. <laughs> um, did you guys know that you had the eye or the talent to be good photographers? Because I take a lot of pictures and I don't think I'm a photographer. <laughs> I'm just a guy who has a bunch of pictures on my phone. We're completely self-taught from YouTube. Yeah, um, I feel like during, my, we used to model for one of my friends on, uh, one of my friends when we did different hikes so we both loved hiking and then eventually we were like why don't we just buy our own camera and we can take some of our own pictures because we followed some of these other travel couples that inspired us a ton so we were like we could totally do this wow that's so cool you guys learned photography on youtube yeah youtube university as we say <laughs> <laughs> oh my god youtube you that's awesome <laughs> You guys should have shirts that say YTU. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can learn. I have a I have a degree in film and media, but I never did the production side of it. And the, like the resources that are currently available online to whether you're learning uh, photography or a totally other skill, it's incredible these days. Where are you guys from? I, I read that you guys are both California people. Is that right? Yes, born and raised in Cal Southern California. Where are you guys from? I'm from Ventura, California. She's a little bit south. Yeah, I, I was born and raised in Woodland Hills. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Valley girl. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, this is perfect because we've got a lot of people watching on Cox Your View throughout San Diego, Orange County, L.A., Santa Barbara. So uh, all your people are going to definitely get a chance to uh, to see all of this. So you guys become full-time travel adventure bloggers. I've been reading a bunch of your blogs. Uh, my son goes to college in West Virginia. I see you guys have a full thing on West Virginia. That that was really cool for someone like me to read. Yeah, yeah, we loved West Virginia. It was beautiful out there. I think one thing that we really try and do is a lot of states travel, especially um, coming out of the pandemic. And a lot of hidden gems are just right around the corner in the states. And a lot of people think, you know, you have to go to these beautiful international destinations, but there are so many hidden gems to explore in the state. And a lot of them were in, there were tons and tons of, these beautiful waterfalls out in West Virginia. We were really impressed. So you guys um, become travel, adventure, outdoor bloggers, if you will. And then who puts the website together and who comes up with the name, The Lover's Passport? That was me. <laughs> 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 I'm betting you couldn't guess that one. Um, yeah, no, I used to work in marketing before I did this. I was um, very used to SEO and the back end of websites and writing articles and things like that. So I came up with the lover's passport by taking like synonyms for couples travel and then came up with names that were still available. Cause I was like, Oh, what's something that's going to get a lot of traffic. It's yeah. not even, there's no like fun story behind it. I just, <laughs> what's searchable. Yeah. And we memorable. would be doing a lot of international travel, but then the pandemic hit so we kind of pivoted from lots of international travel to and started trips. doing a lot of road trips to really highlight the states so jealous dude so jealous um so tell me this you guys are photographers so you need a lot of power you've got equipment with you you're also blogging and you're working on your website so you have to you know be able to be powered and that's where our common partner jackery comes in we've got about a minute and a half i'd love for you to tell us about jackery and what products you use and how you use them 
Yeah, Jackery's like completely changed the way that we could travel. Because before we were always plugging into the car. I think my car battery died like a dozen or so times. And then finally we started using the Jackery and we can charge our laptops off it. We can charge all of our camera gear. And it's really nice because it also has solar panels. So for our longer road trips, we can be completely self-sustained where we can put out the Jackery, be able to get some power from that and recharge even while we're pulling a lot of energy from our laptops. And it's just nice if you're a digital nomad or mm -hmm. doing remote work it gives you the flexibility to travel and still get work done without having to worry about your laptop dying in the middle of the desert you know so exactly. it's such a great tool we've been using the 1000 for over two years now along with the solar panels and we just recently upgraded so we're really excited to continue using our jackery out on our road trips Hey guys, um, Giselle and Steven, it is great to be with you guys. I look forward to a much longer conversation. The website is theloverspassport.com. And the other website that you should know about is jackery.com. And I love what you guys just had to say about powering up and using solar power. That's great advice for people who are going to be tailgating or going to be traveling mm -hmm. themselves. Um, good luck with more of your adventures. You got a new fan uh, who's going to be following you guys on all the social platforms and your website. And thank you so much for talking about Jackery with us. And thanks so thanks much for, for having us. us. A real pleasure, guys. Thank you. Back to the show, everybody. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. Murray Lampert's design process is very collaborative. We love the process, and what's best about the process is the way that it can flex as needed. So if there's a new piece of technology that's available that's really gonna help us out make a more accurate model, we're gonna utilize that. We'll send the measure off team to the house, and they will end up scanning the house using drones, LIDAR scanning, lasers, and tape measures to measure every square inch of the home. Then they'll take that information back to the office and build a 3D model of the home. We'll be upfront and honest if they're asking for things that may be out of their budget, we're gonna let them know upfront. We're always motivated to strive for excellence. There's kind of not another way to be. We do the best work we can and ultimately make the homeowners happy. Uh, what makes me proud is when we present that 3D model to the homeowners and we wow them. Sometimes we even bring tears to their eyes because they love the design so much. That brings me a lot of joy. Watch the San Diego State Aztecs take on the UC Irvine Anteaters. November 29th at 7 p.m. Only on Your View and YourView.com. I feel like I have the fun part of the job where I get to help out and make my clients' houses look beautiful. We start with looking at the floor plan, space planning, and then we look at countertops, tile, uh, backsplashes, flooring, cabinets, everything like that. We have a lot of client meetings start in our conference room. Sometimes we have some clients that have already selected certain items that they want to incorporate into their project. We want to make sure they're happy with it because they're going to be living with it for a very long time. Sometimes we'll do something that you know goes totally with the style and then we'll have a total outlier option for the client. And a lot of the times they end up going with that because they want to see something totally different. We want to make sure that we're focusing in on our clients. I really want to make sure at the end of the day that clients are happy, that I'm keeping up with my communication with them, and that we know that at the end of the day as well, and moving through the process of construction and everything, that we're going to have a successful project. At the Barnes Firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights, and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Hi, great friends. It is a Tuesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. As mentioned, Eric Williams from Fox Sports, who covers the NFL for Fox Sports, is with us here this afternoon. 
And Eric, it's good to have you back. How's it going? What's up, fellas? I'm doing well. Looking forward to this week's games. Yeah? How was your Thanksgiving? Ate way too much, man. (laughs) What was a food coma? I know, dude. I wore pants that had elastic waistband, you know, like rather than a pair of jeans or something where I had to use a belt so that I didn't have to undo my belt and then unbutton my pants. Like I literally wore what were practically sweatpants just so I could feel myself expand like an animal. (laughs) I wore stretchy pants too. So we were on the same wavelength there, Scott. What was the best thing you ate at Thanksgiving? Uh, Turkey was really good this year. Um, My daughter and I have a tradition. We usually bake a cake. And so we made a chocolate cake and we made like this cinnamon swirl cake. That was pretty good. Um. Green beans were good this year. I mean, it was a good meal overall. Not, nothing. Um, I didn't decline anything this year. Mashed potatoes, gravy. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, how about you? Best thing you ate over Thanksgiving? Um, it's a standout plate for you. Yeah. The, the, the best thing I ate on this year's Thanksgiving was the breakfast tacos I had at some taco Ooh. spot in, in San Antonio. Mm. <laughs> at uh, tacos that were, um, I had like a chicharron and salsa roja taco Mm -hmm. i had a chorizo beans and cheese taco Mm. and then i had a uh, barbacoa taco and Mm. this place made like the dopest freshest flour tortillas Mm -hmm. and then i had to go eat turkey after which is never a hit for me unless it's deep fried i I don't really like turkey Mm. Mm. but oh oh sorry wait some dude that was a friend of the family came in and made the most fire green bean casserole i've ever had in my life I forgot about that. I actually took the second scooping of green bean casserole. It was amazing. It was really good. Brown man, you got a you got a contribution to this conversation? Look, man, I already told y'all that Thanksgiving ain't my day. <laughs> you already know about me. Did you <laughs> ever end up like so did you ever get crab legs? Like, cause what's open to get crab legs on Thanksgiving? Lobster tails. I ended up getting lobster tails from Costco. Mm-hmm. You and, prepared and them he, yourself, and he calls us coastal elites. He's eating lobster. Well, on okay. Thanksgiving. First of all, first of all, slow down, buddy. Okay, first miss, first class. All you gotta do is uh, put the stuff in there, steam them, depending on how you get down, and then they're ready. They're not very. They're not that hard to prepare, man. But you did have a meal that you considered to be kind of a special occasion, kind of a thing, by going with lobster. Correct. I mean, I feel like I had to do something. Right. So therefore you did participate in Thanksgiving. Maybe Thanksgiving is your day, fam. I wasn't Thanksgiving for it. I was just eating. <laughs> <laughs> it really was intended to be a simple question. The best thing I had, honestly, was this cornbread stuffing that my buddy David Mitchell made. Shout out mm-hmm. to David. I don't get me wrong. There was great food everywhere. And the turkey was awesome. And my friend Suzanne did the, the Friendsgiving on Saturday where she made this like mashed potato stuffing patty that she like flash fried on both sides. And then she put turkey and gravy and cranberry sauce. I mean, it was insane. But Cooking's just the too one complicated. You know what, uh, dish for me was that cornbread stuffing. Too much. You know where people need to stop messing around with is like Thanksgiving rolls. Just bust out the crescent rolls from Pillsbury and everyone's going to be happy. Right, Dude, right. Stop rolls. overdoing I went it. Hawaiian. I went Hawaiian sweet rolls. That's not Same bad. Thing. That's Whatever. not bad. Not, that's not bad. But you know, if like people go to like a bakery and get like rolls and stuff, I'm like, that. you just took Why? too much effort, man. Crescent Why? rolls, Pillsbury, out the tube. Some- Put some butter on them things. Everybody mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. Keep yeah. it simple. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eric's like, yes, concur. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Eric, um, what a weekend around the NFL. Yesterday, we had a conversation about the Chargers win. And um, I said, you know, hey, I'll give it to Brandon Staley. You know, you go for the two to win the game. That's kind of gutsy. Alex then said, no, it's not really gutsy. It's what you're supposed to do in the moment at the time. And you know what? I've decided I think it's both. What would you think about the Brandon Staley move? Uh, I think it's gutsy. Um, I think the um, obviously the traditional move would have just been to kick the extra point, go to overtime and hope that you have the better offense, better quarterback and can figure out a way to win it in OT. Um, You know, if you don't, make the two point conversion. I think you open yourself up for criticism. Um, in my opinion, even though maybe analytics tells you that you should go for it in that situation, being on the road and, and, and you know, maybe you have more injuries than the other team you're, you're facing. So, you know, you're out there for a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, I, I also felt like it was a game that they, they needed to win. And I think that maybe 
impacted his decision to go for two in that situation just because they felt like they they had to have that in order to to have a chance to reach the postseason. So I, I give him credit for for making that decision, which in my opinion was the right decision. Yeah, I mean, I thought it took guts because you're right. It opens him. He opens himself up to criticism. But on the other hand, you got to win this game. You're on the road. They're not any good, Arizona. You're kind of middle of the pack right now, sitting at 500. You got to win this game. So mm -hmm. gutsy, yes. Right thing to do, yes. Alex, it's both, I think. Yeah, I guess, listen, I'm not going to like tell you that I'm right and you guys are wrong. I just think that in modern day football, in that moment, I think that's the easiest call to make. You really, because especially if you watch the first four quarters, I mean, yeah, you got the three and out right before that final drive. But really, if Arizona was really moving the ball very well, at least especially on the ground, like James Conner ran for like 130 yards on him. So mm -hmm. what you give yourself a tie, and with the Chargers kicker, that's never always a given. And then <laughs> you go into overtime, and then you're relying on a, on a, on a coin flip and your defense to withstand a, a run from Kyler, which the Chargers defense has been completely untrustworthy. So when you put it all into that vacuum, I think it was one of the easiest calls Brand Staley's ever made. Mm -hmm. Or, or... We sit here every week and we say, oh, they're going to charge it. They're going to charge it. Maybe they just got the job done, fellas. Maybe they just got the job. I mean, done. no one's saying they didn't get the job done. They, they got the job done. They got the win. That was a Just much saying, needed man. win. If they fall to five and six, I mean, you can kiss Lose the players goodbye. Well. Yeah. And I, I think this, this Raider game gets a little trickier now because they seem to be mm -hmm. operating at a different level all of a sudden. So, yeah, they got the job done, brother. I don't think they ever, either of us ever said they didn't. That's all. I just wanted to come out your mouth. No, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody's on me too. They're like, put mm -hmm. some respect on their name. I'm Thank like, you. why? Thank why? you. Why they they won Eric, a game made, they had to win. Eric, I made the argument yesterday that like at least three of their wins, it's because the other team chartered more than they did. <laughs> <laughs> the Browns, yeah. The yeah. the Browns, the uh, Broncos, and the Falcons. All three yeah. of them chartered it up way more than they ever did, yeah. and that's responsible for three victories right there. True. Um, I, I kind of agree with you, Alex. I mean, they were very fortunate in those in those games to to come out victorious. But, you know, good teams figure out a way to win, even though it's on maybe the other ten team sometimes that they they get those those victories. I agree with you going to Vegas to play the Raiders. Raiders have won two in a row. Jacobs is, is rolling, looks like one of the best backs in the league. Derek Carr has, has been OK the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, it seems like they're they're getting better on offense. Um, it's gonna be a tough game for them on the road. Yeah, and we're talking Eric Williams That's from Fox Vegas? Sports. The game is up there. It's this Sunday, Alex. You you know, Maybe Alex here. Listen to this, Eric. <laughs> Alex has now decided he's he hasn't gone to a USC game this year, and he's a huge USC fan. And he's decided he's going to go to the Pac-12 championship game on Friday night. Mm. Now, and, and we had this whole discussion yesterday about now that he's married, he has to ask his wife if it's okay. And mm -hmm. under normal circumstances, she'd be like, it's fine. But now that they're married, Vegas like perks her up like you're going to go bachelor partying and he's going to go to the game Friday night, the Pac-12 championship game to see USC take on Utah. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to think to himself, maybe I should stay for the Raiders Chargers on Sunday. Yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble, Alex, but you definitely should stay for Sunday. I mean, come on, man. I know. How do I get it? Let me get a credential. We, we got to check your man card. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no, I got the green light. I got the green light. She was very supportive. He's very supportive. Just, yeah, you definitely should go. It'd be good for and the show. And Eric, his cousin Nancy, who she's just the coolest chick ever, and her husband, and he's also a really cool guy. Um, these guys like race cars in Vegas, so they bought a condo up there. So the kid's got a place to stay. Got cheap flights. He's going to get tickets to both games, no problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, live the life, dog. Yeah. I'm a little jelly. Be honest. Where are you going this weekend? I am going to watch the Seahawks take on the Rams, which oh. may have the the worst defending Super Bowl champion <laughs> team in NFL history. We might, oh. we might be witnessing history this, this year. We're talking to Eric Williams from FoxSports.com. He covers the NFL, and somebody gave him a real garbage assignment this weekend. It's <laughs> and, the Rams. and but But Eric, hey, listen, you know, no disrespect, because last week you look at Fox, right? And they send their number one team yep. to call the Chiefs and the Rams. Now, at the beginning of the season, you're like, hey, that's the Super Bowl champions yeah. against a team that's a contender. And yep. this is a Super Bowl preview. And it turns out that the game's a dud because the Rams are in such – like we think about the Chargers as being injured, but at least their quarterback is playing. Mm -hmm. The Rams 
they're just limping to the finish line. I heard somebody tell me yesterday, no, no, they're evaluating talent. I'm like, no, they're just trying to get to the end of the season. Yes. I think that's more accurate. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I was scheduled to go to that game uh, with the Rams and the Chiefs. And then obviously things changed and um, I, I backed out of that one. You're right. I mean, the, the Rams are just kind of throwing bodies out there at this point and just trying to get to the end of the year. I, I, I don't, I don't know if I see another win on their schedule unless Stafford is able to get back out there because the, the drop off from Stafford to Perkins is pretty significant. You don't have Cooper Cup, who's essentially your offense, so you can't score. Defense is playing good. I mean, but now Aaron hold... Donald's hurt, I, I, which to yeah. me, which to me is like this, dude. We're not going anywhere. Why am I putting these miles on these yeah. tires? I, I'm I'm out. And in that, uh, I was I was on that uh, Zoom call with McVeigh, and he made sure to mention high ankle sprain, so it's mm -hmm. not just a regular ankle sprain. So if you're going to sit him out you know, high ankle, four to six weeks. Let's make sure he's good. These games don't mean anything. Yeah, I mean, Jalen Ramsey, maybe he has a, a knee injury crop up this week. You know, I mean, you're right. Why put mileage on, on these guys when if you believe that you can go and, and kind of reboot and get things going in the offseason, make sure they're fully healthy for the offseason and not playing in meaningless games this year. I think this is going to get louder in the offseason. And really, really not so much right now, but is it possible that we've maybe seen the last of Aaron Donald in a Rams uniform? Mm -hmm. And is it possible that that TV money can be a little bit more appealing for Sean McVay than a rebuild in L.A.? And and is Matthew Stafford going to continue on with these, you know, the concussions of this year and the buildup of injuries? And is Matthew Stafford in his mid-30s really the right quarterback for the future? Which, by the way, you've already tied yourself into a terrible contract given mm -hmm. his age, his injuries, and the fact that they're going to need to rebuild. Yeah, a, a lot of significant storylines for this franchise. And, and obviously they're going to be talking about these now before the season ends. And people are going to be watching kind of the moves they make over the next couple of weeks because that's going to kind of predict what's going to happen in the offseason. I think the number one decision is, is McVay going to stay or not? And then all those other decisions, I think they follow that. If McVay is going to stay, then if you're Aaron Donald, you're more inclined maybe to stick around. If you're Matthew Stafford, you're more inclined to, to maybe keep playing for a year or two. But if McVay is out, then, then yeah, you're, it's essentially a total rebuild and you're starting, uh, you know, a new with a, a new head coach and you let that guy choose his quarterback and, Maybe you trade Aaron Donald. I think that, you know, I think all decisions are going to hinge on what McVay is going to do. Yeah. That sounds like a cut and run from a team that won the Super Bowl last year. Wow. Well, but I mean, listen, do you, do you really want to do what you did when you first got there? You know, like when he got there, they were bad and he helped build them along with Les Snead, obviously, and lots of roster moves, et cetera, et cetera. And they went to a Super Bowl and they lost. And then they went to a Super Bowl and they won. So they achieved the goal. Do you want to reboot? Do you want to start over? Or do you want to say, dude, I don't have the patience and I don't have the, the guts. I mean, meaning like I just don't have the insides right now to redo this whole thing and work like that over and over again. I thought, you know, we won the Super Bowl. I thought we had a run in us here, maybe maybe two or three at least opportunities like Kansas City. And Eric, it just all fell apart, the Rams this year. And I think another thing is, is, just because he's getting that money offered now doesn't mean that's always going to be there. For Correct. Him. Right. He's the hot guy now. He's he hot no more. right now. No, yeah, right. it's cooled off. It's definitely cooled off from last year. I mean, last year after the Super Bowl would have been the highest in terms of his marketability. Now a little bit, you know, less, but still pretty high. So, you know, the opportunity to get that money is there and it's not always going to be there. I think coaching will always be there. He'll always have an opportunity to get back into it at, at some point because of all the success he had uh, during his time with the Rams now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, he just got married. If he wants to, you know, start a family, you know, obviously TV is, is better for that than, than coaching in the league. Yep. I got to so, tell Rams fans though, real quick, worth it. Oh, yeah. tr trust me. Like yeah. I know it's going to be rough, but worth it. 100% hey, worth it. Bowl. There's yeah. 12 teams that have never won one. It is worth it. Yeah, very much just, it, in your it, home stadium. It just strikes me as somebody who is that like wired for football would let the life thing get in the way of football. To me, he's like a coach version of Tom Brady. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep coaching till I can't no more. 
Yeah. So I don't. I mean, the idea of him just not coaching because they are not winning. I I mean, I don't necessarily see that as a as as as, as that's the right move. Yeah. I I think you have to consider his family history. The fact that his grandfather was in the business was a the head scout. You know, um, with the Niners, just passed away this year. Mm. I think he understands the toll that it takes on families. Yeah, and And so it's it's been highly documented. I mean, his parents last year trying to get him to chill out. You know maybe him getting married is a small like example of it. But the bottom line is, I mean, I just think that all these things we're talking about, his family pressure, his getting married, all the injuries and craziness that happened. I I could see him saying, I'll still be in football and I may coach again later on, but for now, chill. He he probably got married. So his parents would get off his back. (laughs) I know you guys don't buy this. (laughs) I know you guys don't buy this as a reason. I'm not trying to lump him into every millennial Gen Z -er, but it's, this is a 36 year old dude. Mm. This isn't a 50 year old NFL lifer. You know what I mean? This oh, is a yeah. guy that's 36 smoking hot wife lives in LA. Like you guys don't really buy into that, but I'm telling you that is a, that is something that going forward when you're getting 36 year old coaches and there's a lot of them now that that's something you really got to think about. That burnout is real. If you yeah. can go get paid more money to do less and still be in the sport. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's a pretty good deal. And by the way, since McVay comes from the Gruden tree, I'll bet you he caught, talks to Gruden and Gruden's like, I tell you what, man, that TV was pretty good. You know? <laughs> None of my emails got leaked when I was on Monday Night Football. Eric, <laughs> Eric did, you, did, you, did you giggle because you actually thought that that was like my Gruden impression? I thought that was pretty good there, Scott. Thanks, You've well, been saving that? Well, it's, it's like a Frank Caliendo impression of John Gruden. Oh, okay. You know? An impression of an impression. Correct. That's what most of my impressions now do are. Your third generation. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, TV is <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, it's the same thing. You're going to say same dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Williams from FoxSports.com is here. Hey, Eric, in the last couple of seconds, or minutes really, um, I, f- I feel like one team right now in the AFC is a little sneaky. Maybe they're not – maybe maybe I'm the one who just thinks they're sneaky, but I feel like all of a sudden Cincinnati is kind of back mm-hmm. – and, and and as much as I think Kansas City is the clear favorite and Buffalo is probably right there, um, I don't know, something about Cincinnati that it, I, I'm not seeing them enough to, to know, but I can see the record. I can see the wins. Yep. What do you think about Cincinnati right now? I agree. I mean, it's kind of the same path they took last year where they heated up late. Uh, Burrow started to play well. They started kind of to connect offensively. I think their offensive line play has improved over the year, and that's why they're, they're maybe a little more efficient offensively running backs hurt so that's a little concerning see if he can get healthy but i think any time that you have one of the top five quarterbacks in the league burrow is certainly that um it gives you an opportunity to have success once you get in the postseason and you could go on the road and beat teams like they did you know at tennessee and, and at kansas city last year you don't necessarily need to be at home in order to win those games so yeah i definitely agree that the Bengals are a team to watch in the asc i still feel like the top team is the chiefs and then Everybody else kind of fits in after them. I don't know, man. The Jets seem to be uh, on the move, especially after Mike Mike White. White. After the Bears. I mean, come on. The Bears are so awesome. (laughs) The Jets could beat the Bears. He's coaxing you out, Brown. I told you I'm sick, man. Don't, don't. I got one ran in me. I don't want to use it on that. (laughs) (laughs) Who regrets their, uh, who regrets their, their, their draft swap trades more? The Broncos? Or the Saints. Ooh. Have to go the Broncos. Broncos, man. At least Broncos the Broncos are, Broncos are a hot mess. Yeah, they are. But so are the Saints. I mean, yeah. Dennis We're Allen. Like the Broncos, what are you doing, dude. man? Like, we know what Andy Dalton is. At least if you're gonna be bad, at least if you're gonna score zero points, at least throw like Taysom and Jameis in there. Have some fun. But now, now you got the Eagles who are like that's maybe the best team in football, and they have a six pick right now. Yeah. Got about a minute here, Eric. Let's give us a final thought on that. Well, I understand what what um what Alex is saying. I guess for me, just because of the publicity of getting Russell Wilson and the expectations mm-hmm. going into it, we expected more from Denver than we expected from New Orleans, and then it's just been it's just been the worst. It's it's it couldn't have gone any worse. It looks like Russell Wilson should be playing the CFL right now. I mean, that's that's how bad he's played, and I, it it even shocks me that he's played that badly. I didn't think he was going to go in there and light it up, but I thought they would at least go 500. Um, looks like Hackett's probably going to get fired, I would think, because you can't move on for Russell because the money's too deep. 
Uh, so for me, it's, it's, it's definitely Denver. Yeah, I know. And then yeah. to see a defensive lineman, you know, I don't know. Nobody knows what was said exactly, you know, but, and, and maybe he's just trying to fire him up for all I know. I don't know. Maybe he's yelling at him like, yeah. get your ass out there and earn that money. But uh, I don't think he was asking for his address for Christmas cards. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they were talking about, hey, what are we doing for dinner after the game? You know, yeah. 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 can I hang out with Ciara? So, Eric, it is great to be with you always. And uh, we will talk to you next week, man. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you. Have a good weekend. All right. Yes, you sir. too. Uh, Eric Williams from FoxSports.com stopping by. Stick around because the USA versus Iran, that's, that's where our heads is at our heads are at stick around this is kaplan and crew from the kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by jackery solar generator explore further with jackery solar generator locally owned and operated not some bland uninspired corporate cookie cutter radio station crap we simply say to those stations you the mightier 1090 espn radio socal sports talk many are adding companion units or adus to bring more value to their homes our experience plus our strong relationship with the city makes adding on easier for our homeowners we listen to you first then design and build visit murraylampert.com for your consultation Join me now is Paco Franco, Medicare Benefits Consultant with Clever Care. Thank you so much for joining us, Paco. Thank you so much, Eric. I really, really appreciate it. First off, we hear that Clever Care is a health plan customized for growing diverse populations. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. One of the most distinct differences uh, of Clever Care is that we combine the, the principles of Eastern and Western medicine to our, our approach of healthcare. You know, we believe in the complete well being of our members and believe that wellness should be affordable. Anybody who's eligible for Medicare can join Clever Care Medicare Advantage HMO plan. We also have another enrollment period coming up called the annual enrollment period. This is the most popular one, which takes place from October 15th to December 7th. And during this time, you can sign up for a new plan, you can switch plans, you can leave a plan, or simply just return to your original Medicare. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. If you're going to count yourself as a fan of this radio station, you will need to continuously ask yourself one basic question. Am I listening? Enough. Pro tip, wives are not a good source for input on this. This is the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. On every mountain and valley you tread, through wind and rain, we're here with you to shine a light when it gets dark and to forge a path where it gets tough. Let Jackery Solar power all your hopes and dreams. Take you where you want to go to the goals you chase, to the ones you love. Explore further with Jackery Solar. Jackery, 10 years on. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your Health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and YourView.com. Your Health is brought to you by Clever Care Health Plan, your partners for comprehensive care. joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio SoCal sports talk.